Coming up on today's Airborne, Bendix King's KLR-10 angle of attack indicator is now FAA approved for installation in certified aircraft. Wearable Wing X, Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble, and ANN announces its live webcast schedule for the AEA 2014 convention. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, when the FAA opened the door for easier angle of attack indicator certification through the use of ASTM standards, Bendix King took the first step through that door. Bendix King has received FAA approval to install the KLR-10 lift reserve indicator in certified general aviation aircraft. The KLR-10 delivers AOA information through an intuitive color-coded visual display that represents lift reserved in a compact indicator, with red indicating little lift is left and green indicating there is enough lift for stable flight. The KLR-10 also uses audible cues like AOA and caution, too slow, when it's connected through aircraft audio sources. The KLR-10 is lightweight and easy to install. Bendix King will be showcasing the KLR-10 and all of its latest products at the upcoming AEA Annual Convention and Trade Show starting March 13th in Nashville. And for the fifth straight year in a row, ANN will be providing live coverage of this major event. The day is fast approaching when young people will no longer know that wristwatches were originally intended to tell time. And the Pebble smartwatch is bringing us closer to that day. Hilton Software has announced the introduction of Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble. Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble uses the watch's low-energy Bluetooth connection to seamlessly integrate with Wing X Pro 7 running on an iPad or iPhone. Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble displays crucial navigation information including GPS ground speed, attitude, time computations, desired track, distance, and other navigational functions. Pebble also provides vibration warnings to the pilot. Those include a countdown timer and when reaching a preset altitude. Dr. Goldstein, founder of Hilton Software, said, quote, For decades, designers have studied ways of alerting pilots. I believe that wearable devices provide a paradigm shift that may help us make measurable headway in reducing accident rates." End quote. Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble runs on Pebble and Pebble Steel and will be in the Pebble App Store later this month. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. For the fifth straight year in a row, Aero News Network is partnering with the Aircraft Electronics Association to bring exciting news about the latest and greatest avionics developments to the aviation world. And we're doing it live and in high def. Paula Dirks, AEA's president, said, quote, The AEA convention's new product introductions always is one of the most popular sessions at this annual event. And ANN's live coverage has helped make it the primary launching pad for companies to unveil the latest avionics products and services coming to market. End quote. 
ANN's 10 hours of live coverage of the AEA convention starts next week on Thursday the 13th and continues through Friday the 14th. On Thursday at 9.30 Eastern Time, we begin with the AEA New Product Introduction Program. Then at 1600 Eastern Time on Thursday, we continue with our extended coverage of the most fascinating new products, programs, and people. We'll continue on Friday at 1600 Eastern Time when we broadcast our special additional live coverage of more fascinating new and original products, programs, as well as more of the people behind this dynamic industry. To access this year's live coverage, visit www.aero-news.net slash live or www.aea.net and also www.livestream.com slash Aero TV Network. It's Friday at last and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim is on the warpath again. He says it's time to present a far more aggressive defense against the FAA user fees and other stupidity. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, he's at it again. I speak specifically about the President of the United States, as well as the rest of his administration and a good part of Congress, who will sit to the side and not worry about the damage being done by yet another attempt to tax, repeat, tax, not once, but twice at least, the aviation industry. Folks, if there is a more uniquely American industry than aviation, outside of maybe automotive, I don't know what it is. The Wright brothers put the U.S. on the map in the early 1900s by opening the world up to a transportation system that has changed it time and time and time again. But at the same time, the government then was smart enough to realize that aviation needed protection, aviation needed to be encouraged, aviation needed to be promoted. It's a lesson that in the last 100 plus years seems to have been lost. This administration, much of Congress, and folks on both sides of the aisle are trying literally to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We are an important industry. We are in trouble. We've not had the best couple of years. Heck, we've not had the best couple of decades. We're trying to recover. Some innovative new technologies are coming to the fore. Big changes are in the works. And if I have any say in it, we're going to be very disruptive and very aggressive about bringing those technologies to the fore and overwhelmingly changing the aviation industry. This administration, this government does not respect aviation. It sees it as nothing but a cash cow. It's time it changed. And the problem is ultimately, it's our own damn fault. Aviation is fragmented. It does not speak with one voice. Many of the associations, but not all, are a joke. They put out press releases. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, we're going to say bad things. Oh, we're going to urge our elected officials. Baloney. It is time for sterner, far more aggressive measures. When the ecological movement feels a threat, they're up in arms. They're vocal. They're proactive. They're aggressive. When the NRA feels threatened, attacked, or otherwise imperiled, they are aggressive, they are professional, they are heard, and there's no question about what they're about. Aviation needs to grow up. Aviation needs to be aggressive. Aviation needs to learn to speak as one voice. And aviation has got to learn one lesson and one lesson above and beyond all else, that we will not be pushed around, and we've got to find a way to make sure the elected officials know it in no uncertain term. Be aggressive. Speak as one voice. Grow up. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. It's not often that aircraft avionics get improved features at a reduced price, but that's the case with Trig Avionics. Trig has announced an upgrade to their TT-31 transponder. The TT-31 will now feature TIS traffic compatibility with panel-mounted third-party displays. Further hardware changes to the TT-31 provide improved installation flexibility. Serial ports on the transponder can now be configured to integrate with other avionics. This upgrade enables installers to match the TT-31 with associated equipment with the least disruption or additional wiring. Additionally, a compliant ADS-B out solution can now be added while retaining the original mounting tray. Trig CEO Andy Davis confirmed that these improvements come with a reduction in the list price of approximately $234.
We'll be right back with more news. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Rostislav Belyakov, the man called the chief engineer of the MiG fighter jets, has reportedly passed away at the age of 94. In the race towards aerial supremacy during the Cold War, Belyakov not only designed superb Soviet fighters, he also forced U.S. fighter producers to design worthy competition. It's reported he died last Friday in Moscow of an unspecified illness. Among the airplanes designed by Belyakov and his team were the MiG-23, the MiG-25, and the MiG-29. Considered to have been primary fighters for the Soviet and later Russian Air Force. He joined the company in 1941 and had become a deputy chief designer in 1957. Belyakov had been unknown to the public until the Soviet Union collapsed, but had been quietly presented with multiple state awards and honors while he was with the company. Aircraft home building is dominated by manufacturer produced kits, but it wasn't always that way. Tom Patton has the story of one manufacturer that is continuing to do things, at least in part, the old fashioned way. Back in the good old days, home built airplanes were scratch built, starting with nothing more than a set of plans. The Zenith Aircraft Company continues that tradition. Zenith announced it has now sent 10,000 sets of plans to aircraft builders in over 50 countries. While most plans accompany complete or partial aircraft kits, some still go to scratch builders. Sebastian Heinz, president of Zenith Aircraft, said, quote, We allow our customers to choose how they build their own airplanes, whether as a scratch-built project or from a completed kit or anywhere in between. Detailed plans for the two-seat Zenith Aircraft design start at $425 a set, Richly illustrated, the sets contain step-by-step -step guidelines with all the information needed to build a complete airplane. It just goes to show that scratch builders are a diminishing breed, but they're still out there. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. That's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.